We already dropped the hint about the bread of life. We're right in the middle of Jesus' conversation with his followers about being the bread of life. And of course, there are some scribes and Pharisees who are listening in also. We'll pick up on, uh, first we read verse 35 and then move down to verse 41 of the chapter number six. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread. That came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Well, did you hear what they said? Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They began to complain about him. Jesus gives this beautiful message about, I am the bread of life, and they complain. Quite the hubbub. Hubbub. That is quite the word. Hubbub means a loud, confused noise as of many people. Another great word is rhubarb. It sounds a lot like hubbub. The word rhubarb was used in movies to make a hubbub. Are you still with me here? When a movie director wanted a crowd scene to imitate conversation, they used the word rhubarb. They would ask the movie extras to just repeat the word rhubarb with different inflections, and that would do the trick for crowd noise. The bottom line is the Jews began to complain about Jesus. They were murmuring against him. What was his offense? What is so wrong with him saying, I am the bread that came down from heaven? For us, it seems very natural for Jesus to say, I came down from heaven. We are used to him being the son of God. The Jewish leadership, they were not used to anybody saying they came down from heaven. People are born of people. So they are saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Mary and Joseph, whom we knew? Jesus is born of people. How can he say he came from heaven? We can hear them saying, come on, his dad is a carpenter, a regular guy. What is the deal about being a carpenter's son? We need to step back into Jesus' time. Back then, children went into their parents' line of work. Carpenters produce carpenters. Rabbis produce rabbis. You go into your father's business. Carpenters don't bake. Rabbis don't bake. Bakers bake. Jesus the carpenter is talking about the bread of life. Jesus the carpenter is talking about someone else's business. This is so strange to them to have a carpenter acting like a rabbi, acting like the son of God. They weren't there when Jesus was age 12 and said, did you not know that I must be in my father's house? They were not catching on that Jesus had two fathers, his earthly father and his heavenly father. This is something we need to remember also. Jesus is not the only person to have an earthly father and a heavenly father. We need to remember that we also have an earthly and a heavenly father. Now we may not be born as the next Messiah, no, but we are all born with an earthly identity and a heavenly identity. We have a physical body and a spiritual soul. We all have dual identities in the universe. 
Furthermore, the Jewish leaders were really nitpicking on Jesus. Rabbis did have two occupations. Remember Paul the Apostle? He was a Pharisee and he was a tent maker. His spiritual job was that of Pharisee. His bill paying job was that of tent maker. Actually, it was quite okay for Jesus to be a carpenter and a rabbi. It was the son of God language that probably got him in the most trouble. Meanwhile, back at the carpenter shop, Jesus was a carpenter. Jesus was not a baker. He was not talking about baking anything. He was a carpenter and a rabbi and the son of God. As a carpenter, he was working on a door, the door to eternal life. As a carpenter, he should know how a door ought to work. As a rabbi, he could teach us what that door really means to us. And as the son of God, he had the keys to the door of eternal life. This leads us to the behold, I stand at the door and knock picture. Do you recall that picture that's often seen in churches? Uh, and many of us have copies of these kinds of pictures in our homes, but it's that stand at the door and knock picture. There are three different versions of this picture that are illustrating Revelation 3, verse 20. The artists are William Holman Hunt, Warner Salmon, and Del Parson. Each artist gave a lot of thought to their paintings. The first artist to do this kind of painting, William Holman Hunt called his painting, Light of the World. And in that picture, we'll scroll back to the bulletin in a moment, we notice that he painted that door without a handle. This symbolizes that Jesus knocks, but we have to let him in. He will not force his way into our life. Warner Solomon is the famous artist of Solomon's portrait of Jesus. He calls his door painting, Christ at Heart's Door. This painting has a subtle heart shape built into the picture. Solomon followed Hunt's tradition of leaving off the door handle. Again, we are to open our heart to Christ. The third famous painter of this stand at the door and knock is Del Parson, who grew up in the Mormon church. He is well known as an illustrator of Sunday school materials. His version is a simple and realistic painting. Del Parson honors the door without a handle tradition also. All three artists went to different churches, but they all agreed. We need to choose Christ and open the door to him. Yes, Jesus is knocking, but he is not pushing. Take your pick, Christ, carpenter, rabbi, baker, whichever hat Jesus is wearing, we need more of him in our life. The world wants to shut that door. The world has its own hubbub, its own complaint. They are knocking against Jesus, the person. Jesus is not knocking against anybody. He is knocking for us. He is knocking because he loves us. He knows life can be a lonely business and he wants to come into our life, sit down and have some bread. Amen. I want to take a moment, if you would uh, be curious, um, I'm going to scroll back to these pictures. This is by the artist uh, Holman. I want to warn you, we'll enlarge a little. And so it's very much a nighttime scene, but there's Jesus standing at the door and knocking. This portrait has no door handle on it. And also, this is the Solomon version. And if you can see, you can see a kind of whitish frame here that makes a heart shape. Excuse me, I didn't mean to bounce around, but there's a whitish outline to a heart shape between these two arches uh, by the doorway. I had never noticed that for years and still I started researching. And then this is the Del Parsons version. Uh, again, it has uh, a high degree of simplicity, not a lot of extra ornamentation. It is meant for children to, to uh, see this as part of a Sunday school lesson uh, in a printed Sunday school book. So that's a quick look at the three versions of this Jesus at the door uh, painting. And so I'll bow out 
out of the screen share, but I just wanted to take a quick moment to look at those uh, illustrations.